Hi friends, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Web Dev. So in this video, we will learn about the synchronous and asynchronous functionality. So this is one of the important concept we need to know before proceeding to the Ajax. So now we know that Ajax, the full form is asynchronous JavaScript and XML. So we'll try to learn about that one afterwards after this video. So before learning about this Ajax, we need to know what is an asynchronous program and also a synchronous program. So synchronous program example, what I can say is synchronous program means which will execute line by line. So that means if one line of code code is finished, then only it will proceed to the next line. One by one, one by one, it will try to execute it. Whereas the asynchronous code, so the asynchronous code means, so it will not execute one by one, one by one. So you will be having a different threads like that. So we know that JavaScript is a synchronous language and also it is a single threaded language. So that is the main thing. So all the people, uh, they will be thinking that JavaScript is an asynchronous language, but it is not as a synchronous language. It is a synchronous language, but there are ways in which we can make our synchronous code as an asynchronous by using set timeout, promises, async await, these are all the things which we will try to learn in this course. And because of the event loop concept and all those things, so we will make our code asynchronous. So, but basically JavaScript is a single threaded synchronous programming language. So first we'll try to learn what is a synchronous programming language and also a synchronous programming language in this video. I will try to show you a simple demo on this one. So let's first we'll try to learn about this synchronous programming. Example, I'm having let a is equal to one and I'm having another variable b is equal to three. So let's console this one. So console is not a, is not a function available in the JavaScript. It is provided by the browser. So that is one important thing you need to understand. So now here console.log of a and console.log of b. And here you'll be having console.log synchronous. Synchronous program. So this is a simple example. Now how the JavaScript interpreter will try to execute is first it will execute the line one and it will store the value one in the a variable and the second one it will store the three value in the b variable then afterwards it will proceed to the fifth line and it will console the synchronous program and then it will console the a value and b value. So line by line execution will be going on. If first line execution is finished then only it will proceed to the next line and then only it will proceed to the third line, fourth line, fifth line like that. So line by line execution will be going on. So this type of execution is called as a synchronous program. If I try to execute this one, if you see the output here down, you'll be able to see first the synchronous program, we'll be able to see the output synchronous program, fifth line, and we are able to see the value one and three. So that is nothing but the A value and the B value. So this is a simple demo program. Okay, so this is a simple demo exam, example, which I am trying to explain you. Now I will try to show you another synchronous program. So by taking the functions example, let's say that I am having a function. You can take that let function one is equal to. So I am using the arrow functions and here I will try to loop over. Okay, where i is equal to one and i less than thousand. So I am looping over thousand times this one i plus plus. And here I can use console.log. Okay, waiting. Here I am using waiting. So then that means waiting will be printed thousand times. Now here I am trying to have another function. Let function two is equal to. So here I will be using another one. And here I will be using console.log. So function two. Function two. Now this is the program. Now what I will try to do. First I will call a function one. And next I will call the function two. So I am calling the two things. Now here what will happen is, so this function will be executed and this function will be executed, but there will be no output. Why? Because we are not calling these functions. Now first I have called this function one. So now here the loop is going on. So now the loop is going on, the, br and the, browser, so the browser will not execute the function two again. So why? Because it will wait until this thousand times loop is completed. So when this thousand times loop is completed, then only it will go and execute the function two. So here looping is going on. So I will, I will execute this function. It will not do like that. So this is called as a synchronous program. Now, if you try to execute this output, 
see it is it is printing waiting thousand times if you try to see i will try to do ten thousand times then you'll understand it now if you try to do control enter see waiting is printing ten thousand times so it is trying to print ten thousand times but function 2 is not executing so it will go on execute it will go on execute like this up to ten thousand times it will write execute so i'll try to finish it off or otherwise so let's take it is as 2000 times only then only we'll try to understand so it's taking so much of time let's try to enter it okay so it, it is taking so let's try to finish it off yeah so now <clears throat> function 2 has been executed so this is a synchronous program okay so this is a synchronous program so now you i think you have got a pretty uh, understanding about the synchronous program now we will try to understand about the asynchronous program so now how the asynchronous program will execute so here only i will try to write the code so asynchronous program is let's say that a is equal to 1 i am having and let b is equal to 2 i am having now i will console dot log asynchronous asynchronous or sorry asynchronous and here I will do console.log. I will do console.log B. So these are synchronous thing. And we have some methods. So set timeout. Set timeout is one method which is available. So here you will be having a callbacks. So using the callbacks, we will be able to implement the asynchronous programming. So here I am using the callback function. And here I will be doing console.log. Okay. Asynchronous. back so let's execute this one so now what will happen is here okay we are, we are having a is equal to 1 b is equal to is declared so set timeout will be executed and here we will be printing asynchronous now it will try to print asynchronous and it will print a value and it will print the b value then afterwards after one second of time it will execute this asynchronous callback so that means so now here we are trying to now the the execution is not going line by line so it is executing all the lines and it is waiting for one second after one second this callback function is getting executed so this is called as an asynchronous programming if i try to execute this line so what will happen let's see see here so asynchronous one two has printed and after one second asynchronous callback is executing so this is one way how we can implement the asynchronous functionality in the javascript programming so javascript programming asynchronous functionality is available through the callback function or promises async await so these things are use these things are helpful for implementing the asynchronous programming normally the javascript is not a synchronous program so there are some ways so they like these ways so pros of the asynchronous programming means there is no need the it is a user friendly there is no need for the user to wait until the action is completed and uh, the cons for this one is that you the programming is not easy to understand so we we cannot uh, predict which one will execute like that and in the synchronous programming means so it is not user friendly the con of that one is not user friendly and the pros for that one is it is easy to understand so we can know the line by line execution of the synchronous code right we can able to understand it very easily so these are the examples of the synchronous code and the asynchronous code so hope you understood about this one if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video, please do support me by subscribing to my channel. Thank you.